So if you had a late night last night and you're looking to uh, warm yourself over and crawl out of the grave that you're in, maybe you want a Corpse Reviver. Number two. So what is a Corpse Reviver? So a Corpse Reviver was a kind of a generic term. In the 1800s, 19th century, the Corpse Reviver is a term that describes any kind of a morning after curative, whether it's a drink or a meal or whatever, you need to revive your corpse, okay? A couple of different cocktails that bear that name, a Corpse Reviver number one, a Corpse Reviver number two, and a few other variations. Uh, the most enduring and famous and desirable of these is the Corpse Reviver number two. So today we're gonna make the Corpse Reviver number two. Now, I've never had this drink before. It's a common drink. I don't know why I've never had it. I just never have. Um, I do know that it comes to us from the Savoy Cocktail Book. Uh, this will be available in the link below. Harry Craddock's, the head bartender of the Savoy London, put out this book. It is one of the seminal and most important and famous cocktail books of all time. This particular reprinting is just literally uh, photocopies of the original reprinted into a bound copy. Corpus Survivor number two, equal parts Lemon juice, quina lele, contro, and dried gin. Uh, one dash of absinthe. Shake well and strain into a cocktail glass. Four of these, taken in swift succession, will unrevive the corpse again. Pretty straightforward drink, except for that quina lele. Quina lele doesn't exist anymore, and that's something that you run into a problem with on um, when you make a Vesper or something like that. Now, if you're hanging out with Educated Barfly, he's gonna make you a Vesper variation using Cookie Americano. For my Kina Lille replacement, I really like this Kina Liero Dior. If you can't get this, Cookie Americano is the next best thing. But this from Tempest Fugit is actually really perfect for a Kina Lille replacement. Don't use Lille Blanc, it's just not the right stuff. In case you're wondering what this Kina Liero Dior tastes like from Tempest Fugit, uh, just in case you're looking for something to uh, emulate it in case you can't get yourself a bottle. It's bitter, like tonic, like quinine, with a little bit of a sweet wine aperitif kind of finish. It's really nice. Um, has a warming kind of effect. Lovely, really, really, truly. So I want three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. There's um, a late evolving note in that Quina Liero Dior that's a bit like pine, a bit like a, a nice, Pine Forest, I really enjoy that. Want uh, three quarters of an ounce of my dry curacao. Cointreau Grand Marnier would be fine here as well. I want three quarters of an ounce of my Quina Liero Dior or my Cocchi Americano, or if you have a time machine, a Quina Lille. And I want three quarters of an ounce of my London Dry Gin. The other thing this drink calls for is a dash of absinthe. I'm just gonna make sure this is actually absinthe. Oh, it is. Uh, one dash of absinthe goes into the shaker. Some people like to do a rinse here. Um, I think that a dash in the shaker will be fine. Uh, we're gonna shake the heck out of this drink. So that absinthe, it's gonna become aerosolized to a certain degree. It won't have any trouble traveling to your nose when it's poured. One big. One small. glass, my drink, my strainer. We strain it carefully into the drink, into the glass. There we have it. I'm gonna garnish this now. Maraschino cherry and a skull. All right, let's taste this drink. Let's taste this Corpse Survivor number two that I've never had. That is lovely. That is a light, Tart, refreshing, uh, almost effervescent drink. The Quina Liero Dior very much holds this drink together. Getting the wrong stuff in there would ruin this. Having a little Le Blanc in there would make this overly sweet. But here it's a bracing, bitter, tart. To me, in a lot of ways, it shares space with something almost like a jungle bird in a weird way. In, in that way, you know, it's, it's almost like something that would have Campari or a real bitter aperitif in it. I mean, and Quina Liero is a bitter aperitif, nothing like Campari, but I really like the lemon, the lemon, which is sour, which is a little bit different than the bitter of the quina. They really get together cool. They get together cool. <laughs> They're so cool together, those two. Look where they go. And the gin has a kind of a finish to it. That that pininess that was present in the quina Liero Dior 
really kind of mates up with the gin. This is a very, very well thought out and balanced drink. Throughout it, it has a, a thread of citrus from the Curacao. And now that I've made it, I would actually stick with Curacao or Grand Marnier. For my taste, uh, going to Cointreau would make this a little, because Cointreau's a little less sweet, this would make it a little too tart, a little too dry. I, I think that uh, if anything, this could probably, and this might be because of what I've been drinking today, but this could be almost a touch sweeter for my taste. Just a touch, like a bar spoon of maraschino. Might be very nice in here. Even a partial bar spoon. No, it's a bar spoon. Okay, yeah, so that maraschino brings up the sweetness just a touch. I mean, of course, maraschino has its own flavor, but it does bring to the fore some of the flavors that I think were buried by the tartness before. It's a personal preference thing. I would say uh, that, is this drink a bracing eye-opener, uh, as the name suggests, as its uh, intended purpose implies? Uh, yes, it is. If you were feeling a little bit groggy, something like this is definitely gonna pry open your face because it really is rock 'em sock 'em, knock you in the jaw, tart and like a ba bow in the nose, and yet balanced, and yet very balanced. It's a great drink. I'm remiss that I haven't had it before now, but I've had it now. It's always fun to do on camera for the first time. I always love a cherry. Oh, I almost pierced my tongue just now. I'm coming out sideways, that's a little safer. A little skull on there. It's more. Of a, it's a warning. That's no joke. Oh, very top heavy too. So all my barware is courtesy of Barfly. Uh, they make pretty great stuff, and there's a link in the pinned comment below. Check them out if you're looking to acquire any of the tools I use on the show. Well, Barfly's got them for you. If you like the show, please, 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 please subscribe and turn on notifications. YouTube's making me beg you for your love. Without it, I can't eat any dinner. Woe is me and my first world problems. But no, um, if you like the show and you want me to keep making it, it would be nice if you would turn on your notifications and join what I call the Ding Dong Gang by Ring-A-Ding-Dang-Dong. Getting a real dirty look back there saying, don't do that anymore, stop saying that. You said that in every episode today and that it's not cool, it's not cool. Ring-A-Dingers, Ring-A-Dingers, Dingers, Ding-Dongs, the, the Dong Gang? You wanna join the Dong Gang? So I leave you with this thought. I was going to do a drink from Herbert West Reanimator. Would it be a corpse survivor or a zombie? Hmm. Ah, yes. I always liked Reanimator. What a fucked up movie that is. The, the zombies in it scared the shit out of me when they come out of the, court, the, the morgue. Oh, scary. It's very scary.